I just got done watching Horizon, which is a program on the BBC, which they show, I think it's every month or every week or something like that. I don't really watch it that much. But basically, it looks at different sort of social and scientific and all sorts of different ideas and principles and things that people are saying and it goes into detail about it and this week or this month or however frequently they put them out they were talking about violence in video games and whether or not it makes people violent now I know what you're thinking because you're probably thinking the exact same thing I was thinking oh great here comes the media trying to portray you know video games as being violent and making us all seem like killers who wait you know just waiting to kill someone and to the BBC's credit they were very sort of two-sided about the whole thing and honestly with their, what they presented on the program, there was more pros to video games than cons. And if you haven't seen it yet, I'll drop a link to the iPlayer video in the description below. I think you have to be British to watch it. So if you're not British, just trying to find. I'm not gonna not gonna advocate proxy sites, but they are out there. Just saying. So I'm gonna go through the kind of the program and uh, tell you, you know my thoughts on the different things that they were showing. Now I'm no neuroscientist and you know this is basically going to be me offering my thoughts on the research done by neuroscientists. So I'm not going to say that I'm more intelligent than them, I'm not going to say I know more about neuro neuroscience than them, but you know what, I had a look at what they were presenting as the evidence and I've got my own opinions on it. So even though I'm not a neuroscientist, I'm sure you know everyone who hears research from a scientist will have their own opinion on what they have to say. So. Let's get right down to it. First they spoke to a university professor in Iowa in America and he basically had, him and his research partner had an idea about trying to see whether or not video games make people more aggressive. Now what they did is they got 30 people and made them made half of them play violent video games and half of them play you know not violent video games and never really said what they did or didn't play. We just kind of said violent video games and not violent video games and what they did afterwards is they showed them real life uh, sort of crimes you know people being stabbed people being beaten senselessly and stuff like that and they measured whether or not the person playing you know the video games um, had any kind of emotional reaction to what they were seeing and what they found was that people who played the violent video games were less um, they were less sensitized. They were sort of less sensitized to what they were seeing, and the people who weren't playing the violent video games were more sensitized to what they were seeing. So basically, in other words, people who were playing the violent video games, they kind of winced less. Their stress levels was lower, and the people who didn't play the violent video games, their stress was a lot higher. Now, maybe there's some credence to what they were saying. They said that for um, they said that the uh, adrenaline levels or whatever that makes you uh, violent. Where it rose by about nine percent. That doesn't sound like a big rise to me. You know, if you're nine, if I'm nine percent more likely to hit someone, I'm still probably not going to hit them. So, um, all the news going on about how violent video games make people dangerous and killers and all that sort of thing. I don't think there's any sort of evidence for, for that, uh, especially with the, what they presented. Even if that is the fact, but, but there is other stuff that they didn't really take into account, like the fact that you know maybe I mean, it was such a small sample size. For all they know, these people could just generally not have much of a sensitized view towards, you know, real crimes. And that is a real thing. People genuinely don't care if they see something bad happening to someone else. And that does include violence. And, you know, it, the, the sample size isn't big enough. If 15,000 people, you know, who played violent video games were studied and had less of an emotional response, maybe it would have a bit more credibility. But the fact that it was 15 people of this study of about 30 people, half of them played violent video games, half of them played non-violent video games. You know, the fact that it's 15 people rather than 15,000 people makes me doubt the evidence. And to be fair, as someone who's played violent video games my whole life, you know, Mortal Kombat came out when I was three, so I didn't really play that um, when it first came out. But when I was very young, I remember playing Mortal Kombat, I remember playing Tekken, I remember playing um, Grand Theft Auto. Granted, it was on mute, I wasn't allowed to play it with the sound up because of all the swearing. Uh, we're talking when I was very young here. I still, when I was going through school, avoided picking fights. I avoided getting into fights. I only ever got into fights when I was forced to get into fights. And the people who were you know, causing a lot of the fights didn't play video games. They took the piss out of me for playing video games. So, the way I see it, there's not enough evidence in this research to suggest that people who play violent video games are more likely to be aggressive. And I'm not just saying that from a biased standpoint. I genuinely don't think there's enough evidence to support that, especially with the small sample size that they had. So there's my thoughts on that. Now next they went, they went to, I think it was Germany, with a neuroscientist who studied uh, people's brain activity while they were playing video games. And what he found was that the part of the brain that releases our emotional responses 
was active while playing video games, which is what you expected. If you see violence in a video game, you are more likely to either feel sort of overjoyed if you're kind of a bit of a psychopath, I guess, uh, or you know, from a neurological standpoint, I'm not saying that anyone who enjoys playing violent video games is a psychopath, I'm definitely on the other side of the argument from that. I'm just saying, you know, that's just the way neuroscientists see it. I'm just sort of basically quoting him. Uh, yeah, and if you see an emotional moment in a video game or a film, then you will feel more emotional. But there was a surprising thing, apparently it surprised him, where, that came out of the research, was that another part of the brain, it was sort of towards the back of the brain, I forgot what it's called, basically it suppresses our emotions, and that was active as well so that can go one of two ways you know um, empathy for someone who's having something bad happen to them that might be suppressed or you know the the feeling of you know enjoying seeing someone get hurt as well that is also suppressed so that can go one or two ways depending on how you want to read that I guess uh, maybe I misread them um, yeah this is all very uh, sort of you know biologically scientific advanced stuff so I could be reading some of this stuff wrong, I'm just going by what I saw on the TV. And like I said, the link's in the description below if you want to have a look at that. You know, I'm just, I'm taking away what I'm taking away. And if I've completely misread some, some research, then that's fair enough, I'm not a scientist. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, basically that was what he basically found. He said he doesn't see anything that raises the aggression levels of video game players while they're playing violent video games. Uh, he can, he says basically you know, take away from his research what you will. Um, basically, whatever emotions we pl uh, whatever emotions we feel while playing violent video games or video games in general, the other part of the brain that suppresses emotions is also active. So I don't really know what that means. I don't really know sort of what he was hinting at or which side of the argument he was on. He just basically ended by saying it doesn't really raise the aggression level. So I guess that's the one thing to take away from that. Now the next person they spoke to was here in the UK, I think it was, and she was looking at addiction to video games and she was doing it from a neurological level. Now her argument is very flawed and I that actually found this part to be quite laughable to be honest. I mean, I'm no neuroscientist but I'm pretty sure her evidence was very flawed and I'm going to go into why. Uh, basically, she thinks that playing video games will make you more impatient, especially if it comes to having... She basically, she got a girl who plays video games maybe five hours a day, and she wanted to look at her brain activity to see if she was addicted to video games. Now, what she wanted to do is try and find out whether or not she would take a smaller reward now or a bigger reward later. And here's where I've got a big problem with her research. She gave the cho uh, this girl a choice. Could She, she would either have £11 now right there and then, you know, British currency, £11, or wait 30 days for £19. Now here's my problem with that. 30 days is a long time. A lot of people would kind of moan a bit if they had to wait 30 days for, for money. £8 difference isn't really a big difference. Most people, I, I would assume, would say, it's only £8, I'd rather just have the 11 now. That's gamers or non-gamers. And you can see evidence for that all over the place. If you go on eBay, and um, someone's got something as a buy it now thing and um, it's up for auction as well if, if you offer a buy if you buy it now you will basically be paying potentially less than what they could get from auction if you, they just let it build up over the seven days or 30 days however long it's up on eBay and most people would accept that you know if it's only a, a small difference and that in itself just seems like she's really trying to fudge the evidence in her own favour. Like, nine pound, eight pounds difference isn't really a big difference, but 30 days is a long time to wait. So, by that logic, I think most people would take that gamer or not. And I think you can see evidence for that all over the place, you know. Um, it's like, you know, it's, it's just such, it's so flawed. That, that argument. If it was like a hundred pounds difference and wait 30 days, then maybe she would have a point if the girl said, yeah, okay, I'll take the 11 pound instead of the 110 pound. You know, it's it's not like she, that that's what happened. You know, it was eight pounds difference. It was 30 days. It's not really that sort of, it's not wait, it's not waited enough. I mean, the argument is that, you know, this girl gave up eight pound to have the money now, but she would have only eight pound if she waited 30 days. I mean, I don't think I don't know whether I'm explaining this fully, but I just I think that's very very flawed. I think that's a very flawed argument. It's not enough money, and it's too much of a time difference to actually say yes. That's because of video games, which is the conclusion she drew from that. So yeah, I think I would also take the eleven pound now instead of waiting thirty days for the nineteen pound. Because to be honest, I'd 
it, it, I'd spend more than eight pound in thirty days anyway. I think most people would. I think most people would not see that as a good enough sort of reward for waiting thirty days. If she said you can have you know a pound now and twenty pound in thirty days, maybe I guess maybe that's enough money and enough of a time difference to try and say that. But eight pound difference for thirty days. I mean, I don't think many people would be bothered to wait thirty days for eight pounds. I just don't think they would. And that's my main problem with her research. But then she studied this girl's brain activity while she was doing different tasks to try and see if she would jump the gun sort of thing. And each time she... It's kind of um, some sort of symbol would appear in front of her while she's in this brain scanning tube. And she would have to respond quick enough. And the quicker she responded, the more money she gets, I guess. But without having to jump the gun. And... Um, honestly, I can't even remember what happened with the end of that research. But basically, they spoke to someone... Uh, someone else who's also done similar sort of uh, research and he said that he thinks video game addiction is sort of a problem in less than 1% of people who play video games so the whole thing was kind of pointless anyway because most people aren't addicted to video games according to this one scientist and he's probably right, he's probably is right. Moving back over to the pros and honestly the rest of the program was just pros for video games uh, they spoke to this European uh, scientist, I've forgotten what his name is uh, but basically he's a keyhole surgeon, you know, p people who have these like really thin sort of prongs and they go into this tiny hole in the human body and they've got to poke through the tissue and sort out whatever's wrong in there again. I'm no, sci I'm no scientist, I'm no doctor, I no don't know exactly what keyhole surgery is. But uh, basically he created a game called Underground and um, basically it's played to train surgeons in being keyhole surgeons. Now basically the controller was sort of a modified Wii controller and it had to, it was kind of, you play a, a lot of the same ways as you would keyhole surgery. You got to cut through the um, different rocks, which are kind of similar to tissue. And, you know, it's, it's a lot, it's basically the way you play it is very similar to how you would do keyhole surgery. And this is basically, it trains you on sort of the pinpoint, you know, very precise pointing with these two prongs. Uh, looking at the 2D screens, you haven't got very good depth perception, perception, which obviously with keyhole surgery, you can't see inside the hole. You've got to look at the screen, and you don't have depth perception because it's a 2D screen. And he says it tra tra trains you on that as well, because obviously the game is played on a screen, a 2D screen, so you don't have depth perception, just perception with that either. And he says it also trains your peripheral view as well, because obviously when you're doing keyhole surgery, you can't cut a vein that you're not supposed to cut. If there's a sort of, you know you're doing the surgery and you've got to go to this one piece of tissue you can't cut another piece of tissue because it might cause problems and in the same way in the game there are different things in the peripheral view that might cause you to lose the game so you've got to keep an eye on those as well and what he found was that gamer surgeons, say surgeons who played video games were much better than the surgeons who didn't play video games because of all these different things it trains you up on so in a way gaming as much as it might seem like a waste of time to everybody else, actually can improve your job prospects, especially if you're going to be a doctor. Now, that could also translate to other jobs in the world as well, but obviously this is brand new research and we don't really know how far this goes, but that's also a very good sign as well. You know, keyhole surgeons are much better if they're gamers than if they're not. And I thought that was very interesting. I thought that was very, very good to actually show that because I didn't know that. Now, staying in Europe now, that they had a test of memory, and basically what happened is uh, members of the public were shown some smiley faces sort of moving around the screen, these tiny little smiley faces. And the majority of them were yellow, and some of them were blue, up to six of them uh, at a time were going to be blue. And they would change colour to yellow, and then one of them would have a question mark appear over it, and it would ask people, what colour was that originally? Was it a yellow one, or was it a blue one? And uh, in the sake of ordinary members of the public, it was kind of... 50-50, uh, but the, what was really, really surprising to the researchers was that uh, where, where it was once thought that the human mind can only keep track of four objects at once, that's a maximum. You know, scientists would say, nope, you can't keep track of more than four objects at once. It's physically impossible. Gamers were actually able to keep track of six. They actually raised the maximum level of neurological sort of tracking in the human brain. So not only were the gamers... Uh, better at this sort of thing, they were actually improving their brains and making their neurological responses just get bigger and they were improving human limitation by playing this and I thought that was incredibly interesting. These games actually improved human limitation 
according to science, and I thought that was absolutely amazing. Next, they had a look at whether or not video games can actually improve the size of your brain and actually improve the capacity of taking in information. Now, what they did to uh, what they did to test this was they got elderly people to play um, a game called Neuro Racer, which basically got to keep the car in the lines on the track and also press the buttons that correspond to the symbol that appear on screen. It's kind of you know really sort of simplistic stuff, and they found that uh, over the I think it was five weeks or five months, I can't remember, that the elders were playing this game, their um, multitasking abilities, their memory, and their attention span improved by 30%. Their brain, their, cor their you know, different cortexes of the brain actually got bigger. Their ability to actually you know, do these tasks got bigger. And the thing that impressed the scientists the most was that multitasking was the only thing that was really getting tested. Memory wasn't getting tested. Attention span wasn't really getting tested. He said that basically by testing their multitasking that much by playing this video game, other other parts of the brain that weren't really being tested also grew. And they tested this again by getting elderly elderly people to play Sega All Stars Racing Transformed, and they found that there was an increase of 30% in every single thing they tested for in elderly people. It actually can potentially stop or slow down the rate of dementia and things like that. And this doctor honestly believes that with people who are suffering these neurological conditions, instead of having pills and drugs in the future, may actually be prescribed video games to help that. And I think that's absolutely incredible to think about that. He really does think that because based on the evidence he got. And I think that's incredible. So I think when it all comes down to it, you've just got to look at the evidence. Now, basically, this program set out kind of to be unbiased and not picking a side and in a way they kind of found a lot of ways in favor of you know video games being a force for good rather than evil and yeah okay they found a bit of evidence that maybe improve maybe raises your aggression, le aggression level possibly but they didn't really you know prove categorically that it's not to do with the individual rather than what they were doing so personally I'm gonna throw that away until I see real evidence to prove that everything else that was in this documentary kind of goes against that. You know, it, if you look at all the other evidence, it can actually improve your brain's capacity, make your brain bigger, improve your other sort of, you know, neurological responses. It can actually make sure you are less likely to get dementia and things like that in later life. Um, and all sorts of things like that. It can improve your job prospects if you're a keyhole surgeon and maybe other types of things and actually can improve human limitation. So personally, I'm going to carry on playing video games, violent or not. I'm going to carry on enjoying them. I'm not a gaming addict. If you are a gaming addict, it's probably not a good thing, to be fair. Gaming addiction probably is a real thing. With As this surgeon said, less than 1% of people. So it's probably not that big of a problem. Uh, but if obviously, for those people, it is a problem. But yeah, I'm going to go ahead and carry on sticking to the opinion I've already got. That video games are a force for good. They are actually good for our brains. And... It's just like with books and films and even non-entertainment things like trains. There was always people there saying, nope, this is bad and this is wrong and this can destroy the you know, makeup of the human being. And honestly, this is just the next scare. Next generation, there's going to be something that scares people like us who are young now and we're going to be old during the next generation. And honestly, it's just the way of the world. So this is probably just another thing like that. If you haven't seen the documentary, I recommend you do because it's very good to watch and honestly it approaches the subject of both sides and if you want to see you know evidence from both sides it's very good so thank you for watching this video leave a comment in the comment section below have you seen it have you not seen it what are your thoughts thoughts like this video share it on social media thank you for watching and i'll see you next time